Hey ladies and gentlemen, this is Mrs. Beckman here and today we're going to be doing Unit 1, Notes 4. So we're going to start by talking about our last form of lines, which is standard form, and then we're going to move on to talk about just graphing lines and it doesn't matter what form. So let's start by talking about standard form. So standard form looks like this. It's AX plus BY is equal to C. So something that's important to know is that A, B, and C are all constants. The X and the Y are always in there. Now, another thing that's important to know is that when things are in standard form, we're not given a slope intercept or a slope or an intercept, okay? So really, you would be thinking, okay, well, what can I really do with it then if I can't have a, if I don't have a slope or a point or an intercept or anything? Well, it's really good for word problems. And so then when we need to graph it, we turn it into slope intercept form. So we make our word problem and then we graph it. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's take a look at an example of just putting it into standard form. So I need to get my x's and y's on the same side. So I'm going to start by adding 5x to both sides. So then I get 11x minus 2y plus 4 is equal to 9 plus 2y. So then I'm going to subtract 2y from both sides and I get 11x minus 4y plus 4 is equal to 9. So now, in order for me to completely get it into standard form, the thing that's just a number or the constant needs to go over to the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 4 from both sides. So I get 11x minus 4y is equal to 9 minus 4, which is 5. So that's my final answer for number 1. Let's take a look at number 2. So for number 2, I'm going to start by distributing in that 2. It's really a lot like following the same steps as solving an equation. So then I have 8, 2 times 3 is going to give me 6x, 2 times negative 7 is going to give me a negative 14. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want to get my x's over to the same side. So I'm going to subtract this 6x over to the other side. So negative 6x minus 6x is negative 12x. Remember, when you're subtracting two numbers, they get more negative. Okay, so I'm going to have a minus 5y and a minus 7. Then I'm actually going to do 8 minus 14. So when I do 8 minus 14, I get that equal to a negative 6. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 7 to both sides. So I get a negative 12x minus 5y is equal to a positive 1. Now, we don't want our standard form to have our x coefficient be negative. So if the number with the x is negative, then we're going to have to multiply everything by a negative 1. So negative 12 times negative 1 is 12x. Negative 1 times negative 5 is 5y. And then 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. So you need to multiply everything by negative 1, including what's on the other side of the equal sign. So that is your answer for number 2. Let's take a look at number three. So standard form also has to have integer coefficients. So what does that mean? Well, it needs to be a whole number. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my x's and y's on the same side. So I'm going to subtract negative 2 fifths x over to the other side. Plus y is equal to negative 3. So what I notice is that I have a fraction, and it's being divided by 5. So I don't want to have a number on the bottom. So I'm going to take whatever number's on the bottom, and I'm going to multiply it by that number so that it's no longer a number on the bottom. But I also notice that my first number is negative, so I'm also going to multiply it by a negative 5. So by multiplying it by a negative 5, I get rid of the number on the bottom, and I turn it to a positive. So when I take negative 5 times 2 fifths, the 5 will cancel out, the negatives will cancel out, so we're just left with 2. Negative 5 times y is negative 5y. Negative 3 times negative 5 is a positive 15. So that's my final answer for number 3. Now, let's go ahead and let's take a look at number 4. So for number 4, I want to get my y over to the other side. So I get negative 5x minus 1 half y is equal, or sorry, plus 11, because it's still on that side. And now it's going to be equal to 0 since I canceled everything out on that side. So I'm going to start and I'm going to subtract that 11 over to the other side. So I get negative 5x minus 1 half y is equal to negative 11. So now I need to have integer coefficients. So since I'm dividing by a 2 there, I need to multiply everything by a 2. So then I get negative 10x 
Negative 1 half times 2 is going to be a negative 1y, so we can just write y. Negative 11 times 2 is negative 22. So again, I notice my x-coordinate has a negative number out front. So I need to multiply it by a negative 1 to fix that. So then I get 10x minus, or sorry, plus y is equal to 22. So when I multiply each of those by a negative 1, they become positive. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at number 5. So when we're looking at number 5, we want to put it into point-slope form to start off with because we're given a point and a slope. So I'm going to set up my puzzle. So opposite of my y-coordinate here, my slope here, opposite of my x-coordinate here. So I'm going to start by distributing that 3 fourths in. So I have y minus 1 is equal to, well that's going to be 3 fourths x, and then 3 fourths times 8. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do 8 divided by 4, and that's going to give me 2. And 2 times 3 is going to give me 6. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So I get that y is equal to 3 fourths x plus 7. So I'm going to subtract that 3 fourths x over to the other side. So I get 3 fourths x plus y is equal to 7. So I want to get rid of that 4 that's on the bottom. So I'm going to multiply everything in here by a 4. And I'm actually going to multiply it by a negative 4 to get rid of that negative out front. So negative 3 fourths times negative 4. Well, the negative 4s are going to cancel out. So I'm just left with 3x. And then y times a negative 4 is a negative 4. So you can either write that as minus 4y or plus a negative 4y. Then 7 times a negative 4 is a negative 28. So that right there is my final answer for number 5. Same thing on number 6. Let's set up our puzzle. Opposite of my y coordinate, remember points go x, y. My slope, opposite of my x coordinate. So we're going to start by distributing. So I get y plus 2 is equal to 5x minus 15. Subtract 2 from both sides. y is equal to 5x minus 17. So now I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. So I get a negative 5x plus, or y apparently. So I get a negative 5x plus y is equal to a negative 17. So that x coordinate out front is negative. So I need to change it to be positive. So I'm going to multiply everything by a negative 1 so that that first term is positive. So then I have 5x minus y is equal to a positive 17. Because when I multiply negative 17 times a negative 1, it's going to become positive. So let's take a look at problems like this. So we want to put it in standard form, but this time we're given a, uh, two points. So whenever I'm given two points, my first instinct is to calculate out the slope. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'm going to get 1 minus 3 over 2 minus 1. So I get a negative 2 over 1, so my slope is a negative 2. So let's go ahead and put that into point slope form. Now remember, you can use either point. Whoa. It doesn't matter which point you use. I'm going to use this point. So then our slope is negative 2. Then our x coordinate is a 1, so I'm going to do a minus 1. My y coordinate is a 3, so I'm going to do minus 3. So now I need to get this into standard form. So I'm going to take my negative 2 and distribute it. So I get y minus 3 is equal to negative 2x plus 2. Then to get that x over 2x over to the other side, I need to add 2x. I could have added the 3 over to the other side first if I wanted to. The order of doing that doesn't actually matter. And that's going to be equal to 2. Then I need to add 3 to both sides. So I get 2x plus y is equal to 5. Okay, so that's my final answer for number 7. Again, remember, if I'm ever going too fast, just come talk to me and I can explain it in person too. So I have x1, y1, x2, y2. So I'm going to calculate out my slope, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So here I have negative 5 minus 3. So since I have two negative numbers, it's going to get more negative. But here I'm subtracting a negative, so I'm going to double slash and it's going to become positive. So I have negative 8 divided by 4. So again, my slope is negative 2. Just for fun, I'm going to use that one this time. So I have y and then my puzzle. So my slope is negative 2. Opposite of my x-coordinate, that's just going to be minus 0. Opposite of my y-coordinate is plus 5. 
So we're going to go ahead and distribute that in. So we're going to have negative 2x, and 2 times 0 is just 0. So I'm going to get my 2x over to the other side. So then I have 2x plus y plus 5 is equal to 0. So now I need to get that minus 5 over to the other side, and I get 2x plus y is equal to a negative 5. So that's my final answer for number 8. So let's take a look at some actual word problems where we're going to be applying some of these knowledge, some of these knowledge, some of this knowledge. If I can speak English, I could get really far in life. Okay, so you have to buy 10 you have $10 to buy carrots and tomatoes for a salad. Tomatoes cost $2 per pound. Carrots cost $1.25 per pound. So we need to assign some variables. When we're doing problems like these, we're going to have two variables, x and y. So I'm going to let x represent carrots, and I'm going to have y represent tomatoes. Okay? So we're going to pretend that we're going to be spending exactly $10, no more, no less. So we're going to use an equal sign. So for every x pound, I should move that over a little bit more. For every x pound of carrots I buy, it's going to cost me $1.25. For every y pound of tomatoes, it's going to cost me $2. So that right there is all you have to do. All we are doing is setting up the equation in standard form, but it's asking it in, with integer coefficients, which I just gave. Now later on, we might start graphing some of these. So let's take a look at number 10. You are moving in to a new house. You can carry 56 pounds at one time. One box of books weighs 18 pounds, and a box of clothing weighs 10 pounds. So let's let X represent a box of books. Let's let Y represent a box of clothing. Okay? So we have... 56 pounds that we can carry in total. And we'll pretend we're going to carry 56 pounds every time because let's face it, we want to make the least amount of trips as possible. So we're going to have X right here. So for every X box of books that we buy, it's going to weigh 18 pounds. For every Y box of clothing, it's going to weigh 10 pounds. So that's your final answer for number 10. Now if you want to, you could pause the video at this time and do the first eight, or, sorry, first ten problems on your homework. If not, you can continue watching the video and finish the note sheet. So let's take a look at graphing things in multiple different, um, or in different equations. So first thing we're going to do is we want to get this to slope-intercept form. So I'm going to start by distributing. So I get y minus 3 is equal to 2 times x, which is 2x, and 2 times 1, which is 2. Then I need to add 5 to both sides. So I get y is equal to 2x plus 7. Okay, so I'm crossing the y-axis at... Did I? Oh, I added it. Oops. Ha! I got a little ahead of myself, so this should have been plus 3. So then I get y is equal to 2x plus 5. There we go. So we're crossing the y-axis at 5. Then my slope is 2, which is the same as 2 over 1. Now, I can't go up to an over 1 because I'll be off the graph. So I'm actually going to go down 2 and left 1, down 2 and left 1, down 2 and left 1. And then I'm going to go ahead and connect those dots. So that gives me my answer for number 11. Now let's take a look at number 12. So I want to start by distributing in that 1 half. So I get y plus 4 is equal to 1 half x. And then instead of writing out a negative 3 halves, I'm going to convert that to a decimal. So negative 3 times 1 or divided by 2 is going to be a negative 1.5. Then I need to subtract 4 from both sides, so I get y is equal to 1 half x minus negative 1.5 minus 4.5 is a negative 5.5. So when I go to graph a negative 5.5, I'm going half of the way to 6. Okay, so then I'm going up 1, which would be to there, and then over 2, because I'm only going up half ways, really. And then I can go ahead and connect those lines. So my slope came from here. That's how I knew to go up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. Okay? So that's your answer for number 12. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at number 13. So for number 13, we need to get it into slope-intercept form. So I'm going to start by bringing the 4x over to the other side. So then I have 2y is equal to negative 4x plus 8. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 2. Now when I do that, I need to make sure that I divide the 4 by 2 and that I divide the 8 by 2. 
So then I get y is equal to a negative 2x, and then 8 divided by 2 is 4. So I'm crossing the y-axis at 4, and I'm going down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. I'm going to graph that line. Same thing on number 14. Okay, so I'm going to start by subtracting 3x from both sides. Then I get negative 6y is equal to negative 3x minus 12. Then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 6. Now, when I do that, I need to divide both parts by negative 6. So I'm going to have that y equals, and then negative 6, or negative 3 over negative 6. Well, my negatives are going to cancel out. And then I just have the fraction 3 over 6. Well, both 3 and 6 are divisible by 2, so I'm going to reduce that fraction to be 1 half. Negative 6 divided by negative, or negative 12 divided by negative 6 is going to give me a positive 2. So I'm crossing the y-axis at 2, and I'm going up 1 over 2, because my slope is 1 half, rise over run. Up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. Okay, and that concludes your note video for today. Thanks for listening.